Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. If you're new here, my name is Tony and I'm a homeschooling mom of four kids. And I am going to be sharing with you one of our favorite curriculums that we have ever used. As you can see, there's a lot of books involved in this curriculum. This is one kid, one year, and all the books that she used. So I'm going to give you a peek into what we used and what all is involved. So if you are interested in hearing about one of my favorite curriculum that is full of rich literature and living books and has a lot of history, very biblical history based curriculum, then stay tuned to hear about Heart of Dakota. So the specific level that we're gonna be talking about today from Heart of Dakota is called Creation to Christ. This is for um, ages nine through 11, and it does have extensions for ages 12 to 13. This is best for about a fifth grader. It could be fourth and fifth, I think they say um, fourth and fifth grade program, but it's kind of for a fourth grader, it'd be a bit challenging. So your, your kid has to be able to handle a much heavier workload. So that's why it's really a perfect fit, I thought, for a fifth grader. And that's what I've heard from a lot of other people too. The best thing that I would say, if you're gonna consider Heart of Dakota, go on their website and request a catalog. Because these catalogs are so amazing and, and just, it gives you such a great look at the curriculum and how it's laid out. They have a page on here, see if I can find it, that talks about the program selection and it just runs you through um, the different books and what ages fit best in those books. And if you want to have them finish a certain book by 12th grade, you wanna make sure you follow these books in order. So um, this is free. So just go on their website and ask for one. But this gives you a really good look at what's involved in the curriculum. So that's my first little suggestion. Um, so I've talked about Heart of Dakota a little bit here and there in my videos, so I thought it was time to do um, a really um, in-depth review of one of the levels. So my fifth grader used this this year. This, um, the biggest perk for this curriculum, starting with about grade four, which is the Preparing Hearts for His Glory, which is the one we used last year. Starting with that level, um, it is so independent. It's almost completely independent. Your child can open up this book and do the work themselves, um, which is amazing. If that is what you're looking for, if you have multiple kids, or if you just have one kid and you want them to be able to be independent and, and work on their own, that's how this is set up. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a peek inside the guidebook. This book is the teacher book, the student book, all in one, which is pretty awesome. So this is one day here. So you can see here, this says unit six, day three. Now, if we look over here, this whole page is learning through history. And then this whole page is learning the basics. So this is all based on history or it's other subjects like Bible and story time, which is tied into what we learned about in history. And then this whole page learning the basics is language arts, math, geography, Bible, and science. But this is all, all you do in one day is all on this page, which is pretty cool. It's just nice to be able to be organized and the child knows once everything on these pages has been checked off or however you wanna do it, we would just, sometimes they check it off, sometimes they just put a star at the top of the page and they'd be done. So the way this is set up is they would just go through here and if you can see some of these pages have an I for independent, meaning the child can do it completely on their own. Some of them have an S, which means semi-independent. They might need mom's help a lot of times. I found that my child didn't need my help for these things. Um, there's another independent. This is independent. This for a T means they need teacher for that. They need mom or dad, whoever's helping with this. Then on this side, we've got um, teacher here. Everything else is either independent or semi-independent. So th that's what I was talking about this level really your child can do almost all of it by themselves, which I just love. So here, um, reading about history, it's gonna tell them exactly what to do. Read about history in the following resource. It tells them which book they're gonna be doing, what page they're gonna be doing. Then here it says you're gonna be adding to your timeline today in your student notebook. It tells them exactly what to do. Label this, draw this in this box, box three, draw and color a burning bush, and then label it with this. It, the other thing it gives in each box, um, is a key idea 
And even when we would go over things together, I always read the key idea out loud just to kind of bring everything together and say, this is what we are studying. This is what it's all about. So the next box here is the history project. And these are all kinds of different crafts and different things um, that, that go along with the history. And it tells them step by step what to do. And that's why I think sometimes some kids um, might need mom's help with this. But for the most part, my daughter was able to do all of these projects on her own. And then there's the key idea again, telling why we're doing this and what how it relates to what we read in history. Then we've got independent history study down here. Um, this one is completely independent. It tells you open your student notebook, copy this, do this, tells you what you're doing. This is the student notebooking pages, which I will show you a close up of in a minute. So that's independent history study. Then we have story time. Story time is done with mom. So we, you have a bunch of books that you'll go through throughout the year. Like this one tells you read Boy of the Pyramids chapter four, or that's if you got the, the history read alouds. Um, you can either buy the history book pack or the um, girl interest book pack or the boy interest book pack or some people do a combination and we did a combination. So if you didn't read that one, if you didn't buy that book, you would do, it just says read aloud, the next portion of the adventure that you selected. So we did an adventure book instead. And then it um, tells you after reading it, have your student give a summary or an oral narration. And um, it's very Charlotte Mason in the way that these assignments are done. Um, a lot of them are done orally if they don't have something to do in the um, in the notebook. So, um, so that's that's a, the oral narration there that they would work through and talk to mom about. Then the Bible quiet time is the next thing, and that is done independently. And that's one thing I love about this. Starting in the last book, the previous, starting in the previous guidebook, which was the preparing hearts for His glory, they started doing Bible quiet time on their own. This year they're completely doing it on their own, which I love. So it tells you choose one of the options below. And you'll either use the, the illustrated family Bible and it tells you what pages to do, or you'll use your own Bible and it tells you what chapters to read or what verses to read. Then it has a scripture focus and it says highlight a certain verse and they'll actually highlight that in their Bible. Then they have this prayer focus here. So it teaches them how to pray. It does not give you word for word to say exactly this, but it tells you how to pray and so this says, pray a prayer of thanksgiving to express gratitude for God's divine goodness. Begin by reading the highlighted verse out loud as a prayer. And by praying, I worship you for sparing the Israelites. Thank you for sparing me through Christ. And it's just teaching them a step up from what they might be praying at this point, rather than just, dear Lord, thank you for this day. You know, just a, a kind of one of those repetitive prayers that maybe start to lose the meaning. And this teaches them to really branch out and start start praying in a different way. Um, it's got a scripture memory that they, they work on for a while. And then there's a music CD too that is um, just Bible verses that they're learning put to music. And then there's a key idea here too. So then we've got the next page here, which is learning the basics. So here, this box rotates between Bible study and geography. So this is something that they do with mom and you will read um, Finding Our Roots, which is um, a study of Genesis. We'll read that together. Um, and then it gives you the key idea. It tells you what to do. And, and then you read the key idea, which I, like I said, I like to do that when we're done, just to make sure um, my child got the whole point of, of what we just read. Language arts is one of those things that it tells you, you can either do, um, Dictation, which is their spelling. If you had a different spelling um, book that you like to do, you can do that instead. The dictation exercises, We this was our first year doing dictation. I really liked it. They're in the back of the book. The poems are in the back of the book too. They have a page in the back of the book that talks about the narration skills also, um, which is pretty cool if you're new to narration. They've got the di dictation passages. So, um, this is level three, so it starts off with some, some easier ones. They study this for a couple minutes, then they get out a notebook, and mom reads it to them, and they write it out. If they get it correct, then the next day they move on to the next one. If they get anything wrong, then they have to repeat that the next day. So um, 
This goes on where you can pick different levels and we ended up moving to some of the harder, longer passages because the beginning ones got a little too easy for us, um, for my daughter. But she did really well with these. I think it was really good to be able to, um, to do spelling in a new way. It was really neat. So that's the dictation. And then it also has um, doing a writing program. So things, it, it switches between writing one day and then another day. It might do um, reading, drawn into the heart of reading is what we did, or you can do a different reading program. Um, and then language. So it's got either the options they give you or you can do your own grammar program, which we did our own grammar program. So they just have to read in this box. So you're not doing the same exact thing every day. It tells you what to do. Um, so that is that is semi-independent, probably depending on what you do. For the most part, my daughter did that on her own. Um, there's poetry, which we studied Robert Frost this year. So she learned all kinds of poems from Robert Frost. And then they learn how to do watercolor. And she'd never done watercolor before. And this was such a cool thing. It gave step-by-step -step how to do different things. Um, so they would have already painted a background on day two. And that says, today you'll be painting fireflies and a tree on the background. You'll need a palette, water, and a toothpick. It goes all the way through, tells them exactly what to do. And then when they're done, once it has their painting has dried, they're going to um, do their poetry copy work on a little note card and cut it out. And then they tape it to, um, or glue it to the front of their painting that they just made. And she ended up with a beautiful portfolio of um, paintings by the end of the year, which was really neat that it was combined with um, poetry and art, which was really neat. And then math, it tells you choose which math you wanna do. They recommend Singapore, but they also say you can choose your own math program. So you just make sure you do, if you do your own math like we did, just make sure you do that every day. And then the science exploration is independent as well. So they will tell you what to read. I mean, this is so straightforward. This whole thing is so straightforward and easy for a child to do completely on their own. They don't really need a lot of hand-holding, which is pretty cool. Um, so they've got questions. A lot of times for science, there's either gonna be an experiment um, where they'll do, um, uh, where they'll do a lab page or they'll have questions like this one after they read, they're gonna answer these questions on a separate piece of paper. And then they've got the key idea here. So that's one day and it's not that overwhelming. Um, I just think it's a great setup. It's real easy um, and, and we just loved it. It was really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what books we used for history and science for this year. So the first one, you may have seen this in one of my other videos, um, What in the World. This is a CD set, an audio CD that you listen to the history lessons, and my daughter loved this. Um, it's Diana Waring, and um, she's the one that um, that is reading the, the history stories to the child, and my daughter just said it was so good, and she learned so much, and she really enjoyed this, so this was really fun. Um, we have, they have notebooking pages that they do, that um, I, I think I showed in the, the reading about history part. Um, so it comes in just a pack like this. I have an extra set, um, but my daughter had this one. You just put it in a notebook. It's a nice thick paper. Um, but anyway, they do all kinds of things that they tell them what to do. And, um, and they do these at, for their assignments as, as the day explains what to do. So you end up with this nice little notebook full of little activities that you did throughout the year. So that was really cool. <clears throat> Drawn right through history um, is one of the things that they did for the independent history study box. And this is just a nice little, um, it's a nice little book that teaches them how to draw certain things. So it does a step-by-step -step program of, of how to draw each picture, what they're going to end up with. And then they usually have, um, either a story or a Bible verse or something, usually it's probably a story, that has to do with the picture. So it's also handwriting included in with the picture. So um, <clears throat> this, I think this is really cool. My daughter didn't necessarily love it, but most kids don't like handwriting. So I think that was the part that she didn't love, but she did like the drawing. Um, a child's geography, this is the part that um, I, the teacher does with the child. This was fun because the whole idea behind it is 
you're, they start out the story saying, um, or they start out the book saying, come along with us on a carpet ride and we're gonna go um, take this carpet ride through the Holy Land and discover all these different places. So the way that you're doing geography is you're um, picturing yourself on this carpet ride with your child and they're picturing it and it'll tell you, oh, as we go along here, peek over and you'll see the where the Tower of Babel is and where these people are. I'll mention famous places that you're learning about and you're kind of picturing it as you go along. So it's really cool. Oh, see those pyramids over there and and it'll talk about the people in the marketplace selling things and they're learning different vocabulary words and, and things throughout the story while they're doing it. So this was really cool. It's got like a travel log in there and um, uh, field notes that they would do. So that's kind of the assignment after you've read it. So this was a fun book. I really liked this. It has a um, CD that goes along, uh, that you use on the computer too, if you need to print maps and different things. Okay, so this is the other book that they used for history, the story of the ancient world. Um, so this is one that they just did independently. Then they've got these two books that they read, Ancient Rome and Ancient Greece. These are just um, little books that they read. And then this is the Genesis Finding Our Roots. This is the other thing that they would do with mom. It was a neat way to, um, to really go in depth in the study of finding our roots from where we came from, from the beginning. So that was kind of a cool book. Um, so then science is another one. So we had these two books that she read on her own, Plant Life in Field and Garden and Birds of the Air. And these are just little readers. Then there is the Apologia book, Exploring Creation with Zoology 3, Land Animals of the Sixth Day. She really liked this one. Um, this is a pretty well-known book or um, company, Apologia, and it's got lots of pictures. And um, yeah, I think she learned a lot in this book. She enjoyed studying animals, so that was a cool book. Um, then there were three different books with science that was kind of cool. Um, this one was an illustrated adventure in human anatomy, and this had a lot of really good pictures and different things in here that I thought were neat in studying the human body. Um, and then these two books about medicine, this one I believe is pronounced Gallon, I could be wrong. That's what, that's what my daughter said when she re would tell me about it. Um, and The Gateway to Medicine. So this was just a, a living book, you know, it's just a story of this guy's life um, and how he discovered medicine. But she loved this book. She was always telling me, oh, this is so cool, what I learned about. I was kind of surprised how much she liked that. And then this book also, The History of Medicine, from the ancient physicians of Pharaoh to genetic engineering. And it just um, goes through medicine and that was a neat book too. So I love that they studied medicine in with animals and everything just kind of tied together. It was really cool. So the other book, this is an optional book. So for the Bible study, if you remember when I showed you, um, you could either use the illustrated family Bible or you could use your own Bible. And this is the illustrated family Bible. I um, Originally didn't have this and then partway through the year a friend or someone was selling this for like a couple dollars. So um, I bought it and I had her start using it like once a week. It, I still want her to use her own Bible, but I thought this was really cool because it's illustrated. Um, it's got just, it's nice to be able to visually see pictures that go along with um, the Bible stories that you're learning. I mean, this isn't a, like one of those little tiny kids beginner Bibles. It's not like that. But it just kind of, um, it was appropriate for this age. It's kind of like one of those children's encyclopedia type of things, but for the Bible. So this was just a cool reference to have, um, but it's not required. So that was kind of neat. So now we'll look at the story time books. Okay, so the next part of this curriculum that really added to it and just kind of brought it to life, and I thought it was a cool connection between me and my daughter, especially since so much of the other stuff that she was doing was independent and I, I wasn't super involved in it. Um, you probably could be more involved and have her do stuff, but I had two other kids doing um, the same curriculum, so it was kind of um, a lot. So a lot of that I wasn't involved in. The story time was something that I really valued and I thought was a great addition to, um, to our day and to the, the curriculum. So these are some of the books that we did. Um, it would just be, it would tell you, read, you know, this chapter or this many pages today. And we would just go sit down on the couch and cuddle together and read read a book. So we did um, Ballet Shoes. There was Anna Green Gables, Bound for Oregon. 
um, Gone Away Lake, 21 Balloons, Caddy Woodlawn, Summer of the Monkeys, and the Golden Bowl. So they do have um, different sets of books that you can get. This, I kind of mixed ours up. So there's like a girl's interest set and a boy's interest set, and then there's a history set. So I believe the Golden Bowl, this might have been the only one that was from the history set. Um, last year we did the history set and it wasn't quite as enjoyable as I was hoping it would be for her. So I thought I'm just gonna do some other more fun books this time. But these were all, so these were kind of a mix. Like this may have been from the, the boys. Some of these were from the girls. Um, obviously anybody could read any of them. Um, but it was just kind of a neat mix and it was a good thing for us to do together. So that was what we did for story time. Okay, so the last piece of this curriculum that we use this year is actually optional, but it was something that we tried out this year, and I think she really, my daughter really enjoyed it. Is the it is the reading part of the of the program. So it says in there you can either use your own reading program or you can use their reading program, which is called Drawn into the Heart of Reading. So last year we used our own reading program. We were doing Christian Light Education, and it's more of a workbook style reading program, and I liked that. Um, I liked that for up until fourth grade. And then this year I thought it might be better for her to branch out and try something new. So we tried this and it says it's a multi-level reading program to use with any book that you choose. Um, so you can use this book. The nice thing is it's a genre study. So it talks about, um, you'll read a, a mystery book, you'll read a historical fiction, you'll read a humorous book, um, all these different genres. And then um, they have a lot of different activities in the student book. Um, one thing that this, along with the history, really this entire curriculum is very God-centered. So if that is something you're looking for, that, this, that is a huge perk. This is a very strong Christian program. It's also very strong academically. So keep that in mind. Um, but even the reading aspect of it, it, likes, it, it draws you to look at the godly characteristics and certain characters, even if like this book, The Secret of the Old Clock, it may ask you a question about what kind of godly characteristics do you see from um, from this character? Well, Nancy Drew isn't, I don't think there's anything in here that points to her being a Christian, but you can still look at her attitude or her actions or different things that, um, that show maybe she's trustworthy, I don't know. But um, different things like that, that they want you to just start looking for those things. So it was really cool. Um, it was really good for her. I actually didn't use, I, there's a lot of stuff in this, teacher's guide that you could do. I didn't even use this at all. She did this on her own. Um, like I said, I just had, I had too, too many different things going. Um, so this was something she could just do this part on her own. So she would pick a book. It teaches them how to schedule out your books. So like for when she did Caddy Woodlawn, it says for her to write down the book title, the number of pages to read daily. And then she's supposed to write down chapter this to this or chapter this she's supposed to plan out how long it's going to take for her to read that book um and i thought that was kind of a cool way to um just teach them how to schedule things out and, and be responsible and make sure they're doing it on their own and there's different pages so like for this one there was a character web that she did um character profiles looking at godly character uh biographical collage there's a question and answer sheet um they talk about descriptive details so there's different worksheets for every book. Um, so that was kind of cool. That was just a neat thing for her to do after she, um, I think we only did this, a worksheet like once a week. And so the other day she would just be reading. But the books that we chose were from the list. They have a printable reading list that you can find online um, because I just wanted to make sure I was picking good books that were appropriate for her age and that um, I just wanted to go with what they recommended. So they recommended a handful their age. Um, and so, I think this one was mystery, The Secret of the Old Clock. There was The Middle Moffats, which I believe was um, probably humor. Um, a House of Tailors might have been historical fiction. So they had The Wolves of Willoughby Chase, and this was an adventure book. The Borrowers of Float, that was a fantasy. Then Caddy Woodland's Family was biography. And then she also read a book called The Castle Corona that we got from the library that was folktale. She really liked that one too. Um, but we checked it out from the library. So this was just a cool way to do reading. I thought it was different. 
So that's my review of the Heart of Dakota curriculum for the Creation to Christ. If you like books and you're, you like reading or your child likes reading or you just want to encourage reading using living books and different things, um, this would be a great curriculum for you. It, this looks overwhelming, but like I said, these things are spread out throughout the year. They're not reading all these books in one day, but it's a nice, rich curriculum. It was so nice when we went through and pulled all their books out of their shelves and we were cleaning out all the stuff for this year and just to look back and say, wow, you guys, you read all these books. This is great. So it was kind of neat to be able to do that. So if you want an independent curriculum, if you want a God-centered curriculum that weaves biblical history in with um, secular history, um, this is great. This is so good. And I loved being able to see those um, historical things that happened in time but lined up with each other. Because that's something that I didn't see growing up. We, I went to public school, so we learned secular history. And then at church, we learned biblical history. And I never put the two together. So it was really cool to be able to do that. And it's just really good. So keep this in mind as you're looking for your curriculum next year. Like I said, go on their website and request the catalog and flip through the catalog because they've got so many They've got so many different levels and um, it's just, there's so many different options of things you can do and you don't have to do all these things. If you didn't wanna use their re reading, that would knock off a bunch of these books. Um, but I highly recommend this curriculum. It was really great and it was a really good fit for our family this year. So that is my review of Heart of Dakota. I hope this helped you see what it looks like and how it worked for our family. Maybe you can figure out if this is something that might work for yours. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.